Hey there everybody, welcome back to DV Tech. It is awesome to see all of you guys here again. If you are new to the channel, my name is Dave and I do tech reviews here. And I've been living with the Google Pixel 7 Pro for just about a month now. And there's a lot of interesting thoughts that I have on this device. Now, if you are new to the channel and haven't seen my 7 Pro versus 6 Pro review, I have that linked right up here in the top right corner of your screen for you. That video looks at a lot of direct comparison between these two devices, looking at processing speeds, the differences in how um, applications are handled, cameras and things like that, where this video is going to be really looking at this phone through sort of like a standalone lens and using this every single day as my daily driver and all of the things that I've noticed and haven't noticed. Also, I'm really not feeling well while I'm recording this. And so if I seem super low energy, it's not because I hate you guys or have a disdain for YouTube in general. I'm just not feeling that great. Now, typically in my reviews, I start with the thing that you notice first, like the build quality, and then start to sort of rattle on to the things that are more under the hood, applicable to real life experience and usage. That's the stance that I typically like to take with these things. But I did want to mention something that I forgot to put in the 6 Pro and 7 Pro review that goes along with like the processing side of things from the G2 over the G1. The Magic Eraser, for example. And using the 6 Pro, one of the things that I did notice and kind of overlooked because the overall package was just that good, is that the Magic Eraser would sometimes take quite a while to actually process away the things that you were trying to erase. And, you know, I say then the results were always really good, typically really good. Um, on the Pixel 7 Pro with the G2 processor, I was hoping that perhaps the processing would be faster on the 7 Pro. I can say in most instances, it is like maybe a second or two faster, but it's not like a groundbreaking difference, if I'm being honest. It is nice because it allows you to get that result faster than on the 6 Pro. Um, and the results are largely the same in terms of the ways that they will remove the background objects that you're looking to get rid of. Sometimes there is some variance and sometimes like a tree, for example, will get um, filled in on the 6 Pro differently than on the 7 Pro. Uh, but for the most part, they achieve the effect in a similar way. If you're new to the channel, I'm a big gamer. I have my Nintendo Switch right over here and my PlayStation 5 downstairs. God of War Ragnarok comes out next week and I'm super duper hyped for that. Uh, no videos are being made during that time. Anyway, you can play God of War Ragnarok on your Pixel device, but what you can play are a suite of really, really graphically intensive games like uh, Punishing Grave Raven. I love that game and also Genshin Impact on this device. I will say I've noticed that, I mean, A, for starters, this runs all of those games really, really well. Near max settings, not quite max like you can on say the iPhone 14 Pro Max or on the Galaxy Fold 4. But you could definitely run things on high settings and I've noticed that on Genshin Impact, there are a couple of sliders that I can have um, a setting higher than on the Pixel 6 Pro and it'll say it's overclocked, but it'll still run really, really well on the Pixel 7 Pro. Phone is flatter, slimmer, and it feels really good in the hand. The 6 Pro again feels like a Galaxy device in the hand and I would say that this takes this to that next level of feeling premium and feeling sturdy and durable while you're wielding it. One of my main complaints on the 6 Pro was that the volume buttons were mushy, honestly, and sometimes I couldn't even tell that I was increasing the volume even though I was trying to increase the volume or on the 7 Pro you can you can hear that there's a nice satisfying click and the feedback that you get from that click feels really really good looking at the volume rockers right the next logical thing is the speakers and I talked about in my one year review on the 6 Pro how those speakers for me personally my usage you know working as a therapist and listening to um, up-to-date information on uh, therapeutic orientations, diagnoses, and things like that. The 6 Pro at maximum volume, I would like just barely be able to hear what was being said. Uh, and that was a little bit inconvenient, but on the 7 Pro, I can have this on maximum volume and I can hear clearly what it is that's being said in the podcast. So for me, that is a huge plus that in my niche circumstance, I was looking for out of the 7 Pro and it's been delivering in that way. And I've been really grateful for that. Now, in my one year review for the Google Pixel 6 Pro, I talk a lot about how impressive the voice dictation is on that device. And here we are a year later on its predecessor, the 7 Pro, and honestly, it is just as impressive. I compare this directly in my 6 Pro versus 7 Pro video. I won't give away 
um, the results of that one. You'll have to watch to kind of find that out. But I will say that the 7 Pro's voice dictation is really, really good. And again, for me, working as a therapist, this honestly gives me a nice head start. I can open up a Google Docs for my individual clientele. And on the drive home, I can sort of get a head start on relaying the information that happened in session and putting them into that Google Doc so that when I get home, I can sort of tidy them up and then, you know, enter them into our system for notes for the clients. So in that way, fitting into my lifestyle, this has been really, really helpful over this last month. Quick charging and battery life. In my one year review on the 6 Pro, I mentioned that that's something that could have been improved. I had my clients earlier on in the day, and then I had my classes for grad school later on in the evening. And so there typically would be like this 30 minute window in between my last client and the beginning of class where I'd have an opportunity to sort of like come home, make a quick sandwich or get a drink or something. And in that time, charge up my device. And for me, that worked. But also, I can still be objective and say, hey, even though it works for me, this is something that can still be improved upon. And I can say, here we are on its successor. And those two things are honestly about the same. Quick charging does not appear to be any faster to me than on the 6 Pro. And the battery life has been getting me around that same six and a half-ish hours of screen on time. Now for me, the way my days work typically now, I have a bit more time available to me in the morning right now for this particular time of season with clientele. And so I don't really need to be in a rush to have this topped up. And then I have my clients usually from the afternoon over through the evening. I know I have a client at say like 12 or one o'clock. I'll have the phone charging before them before I leave. And it'll last me until I get back home around six or seven around there. And so for me personally, the way my lifestyle works right now at this current moment in time, though we'll say there is some battery anxiety on the weekends when I'm out with like family or my girlfriend, if we're going say pumpkin picking or something like that, I'm conscious to not do too much gaming on my phone during that time. Uh, Cause I know I'm going to want to take pictures and video while we're out there and being mindful. I've gone to the end of my day with around like 10 ish percent. If I'm being mindful, I will say, honestly, I think the fold four has better battery life than the 7 Pro, which is not something I was expecting. But for those of you who live a lifestyle that's conducive to a six and a half hour screen on time device, um, and you're not too worried about that, this is something that, again, for this price range, this hits the marker pretty well. Now, in other YouTubers reviews, I usually see that when they're doing the camera section for picture and video, they kind of break down exactly what they're seeing in sort of like a scientific sort of way. You guys seem to really like when I just sort of present you the pictures and video and let you decide for yourself in the comment section what you think looks good or doesn't look good. You let me know in the comment section what you think and Enjoy. Red, game on side. Come in. A couple of things I will say. The first one being that on the 6 Pro, I did notice that on video sometimes you'd get like this grain around the perimeter of the screen while you were recording and in the final product also, even after it was done rendering. Um, on the 7 Pro, even though there's still small traces of grain, depending on like where you're filming and how you're filming, it is significantly reduced. Uh, from the 6 Pro and that's something that I was really really happy to see that was one of the, the bigger gripes that I had on the 6 Pro For the most part is one of those things where the phone functionally worked 
awesome in most every use case, but it was kind of annoying and they seem to have fixed a majority of that. You probably are wondering, you know, is there a big benefit to getting the 7 Pro over the 6 Pro? And honestly, using this over the last month in a lot of ways, it's felt really familiar to the 6 Pro. On a day-to-day -day basis, it feels better in the hand overall, undoubtedly. I much prefer this form factor over the 6 Pro, even though the differences are slight. Performance is fantastic on the 7 Pro, just as it is on the 6 Pro. Um, opening and closing applications, the animations are great. The 120Hz refresh rate display is incredibly smooth. Cameras are awesome. Gaming performance is slightly better. Processing side of things seems to be slightly better. And the phone overall just seems to be like slightly better than the 6 Pro. And it's one of those things again where Pixel phones feel like the iPhone devices in terms of refinement of the Android ecosystem. And that here has not changed and I've been loving that. And again, this is going to be less expensive than your iPhone 14 Pro series, the Galaxy Fold 4, absolutely. Again, if you're new to the channel, want to hang out with me and see what I'm up to next, the reviews I'm going to be doing next, I'm thinking of doing a trifecta battle between this, the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and the Fold 4. If you want to see that, let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you have a fantastic remainder of your day, afternoon, or night, depending on the time it is that you are watching this. And as always, peace, love, and... Uh, Adios. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.